All right, how are y'all? JJ Cannon with Digital Delight. I'm excited to jump on here with you guys, and today we're going to be discussing the importance of a structured network in your home as well as a solid Wi Fi solution in your home. And for everything that we do in our industry, it starts with the foundation of a solid network. And I'm going to bring my buddy Chris Gamble on here with me, and let's see uh, I can get him added. And it looks like so far so good. And we are hey, connecting. Ah, dude, I can see you. I yeah. can hear you. Dude. This is great. <laughs> we, we have a lot of bad luck with connections, and it's ironic we're going to talk about good connections tonight. I tell you, but I mean, I think one of our, our hurdles is our distance. We just have a couple of you know, thousand miles in between us. And so that might have something to do with it. I'll, I'll blame it on distance. Let's blame it on Brexit. Let's blame it on Brexit. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. All right. Well, how are you doing today? Very good. Yeah, another, another long day uh, on our one of our projects we're working on up in Scotland. Hey, quick wave out there to Alan. Thanks for tuning in, Alan. Um, What's up, cowboy? Yeah, we've had a long day uh, working on a project up here in Scotland. Uh, a house with a big network, a lot of wireless devices for indoor and outdoor coverage, lots of devices powered over, over network cabling, um, like CCTV cameras, Wi-Fi access points, doorbell chimes, um, just a big house with a big network um, with a lot of cables in the fabric of the building. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's kind of something that's unforeseen, uh, a network and, and, the, and people are starting to come around to understanding the, the, the importance of a network and not in traditionally it was more commercial based, but as devices start to come into our homes that are network based, it's a need, a major need to have these structured networks in, in residential platforms. I mean, there's one solution that we're uh, home that we're doing right now. We have currently 112 discovered uh, devices on this network. And th this is in a home uh, and you know, 6,000 6, square foot home, 112 devices currently. And uh, we're probably going to be adding another 20 devices to that network. And so it's crucial to make sure that your IP addresses, your subnets, your gateways, as well as the router is, is set up correctly to handle that type of, uh, that type of load and stress that, that, um, that you're putting on that network. And so, yeah, it, it's really important that, to have a professional, somebody that knows what they're doing. And in our industry, we've kind of expanded we've, uh, our, our abilities into a network company, into an IT professional. Yeah, you know, we talked about it before, you know, home technology professionals being that hybrid trade that bring together electrical, IT audio visual security and, and many other many other industries meshing together uh, to create this home technology pro uh, tag that we've got and, and going back to the through the network and the, and the router people rely so heavily on that free router that you get from your service provider and and you know you expect that to reach every corner of the house but reality is that freebie router just doesn't cut it it's not got the reach. It's not got the capacity to, to handle all these devices. Even an average home nowadays, you know, you're looking at between 15 and 25 devices connected to the internet. And even that can exceed the, the capabilities of a, of a free router from your internet service provider. Um, and even if the router is okay, it might just not have the the guts to, to reach every corner of the building with, with Wi-Fi. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, not, and knowing your service providers needs, and it's really different how y'all do it than how we do here in the States. But what's uh, 
really starting to come into focus is not necessarily always the download. I think we've got that figured out, but it's the upload okay. sure. and, and how fast you can get con uh, content from your home up to wherever it needs to go. Cloud basis, uh, for instance, for video doorbells and, yeah. and making sure that, that response is quick enough uh, so that it can send that signal because the faster it gets out of the home, the faster you're able to receive it on your device, wherever you might be in the world. That, and video content is really... What, what are you seeing as kind of average download and upload speeds for, for a typical Houston home? What, and I'll give you a comparison to the UK. Yeah, well, we have a, we have a variety of different packages that we can choose from. And that, that's a great question because clients are always asking, how much do I need to purchase from my ISP. And usually if it's a two person home, 50 to 60 down is more than, more than you could possibly use with two people streaming at the same time or four things streaming at the same time. Usually that's a pretty healthy download, but upload more for those devices that people aren't necessarily streaming, but just getting the content back, you know, we wanna to try to have about the same. So 30 up as well would be ideal. And, and also that depends on how many wireless upload streams you have going on at the same time. A good example of that would be like Nest, uh, uh, Nest cameras or Ring cameras, you know, those wireless video streaming devices that, that are very popular right now. How about yourself? Well, I'm actually very jealous of those speeds you've just described. You know, the UK average is probably about between 10 and 20 meg download and could be as little as one meg upload. Ooh. And that's, that's, that's very common. Um, and I've got firsthand experience of uh, living in homes where the download speeds might only be as low as three or four megabits per second with an upload mm -hmm. of 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. And that, People are living with that. They're trying to they're trying to use Netflix. They're trying to use, um, you know, smart home devices, and and they're coming up against real challenges with their broadband speed. Um, in fact, somebody's just come on just now, Duncan Grant. You know, his family live in one of the most rural parts of Britain, and their internet speed for a long time was was horrendous, and it limited the family accessing on-demand TV, it limited, um, you know, making calls over the internet on your phone, video calls like this would be, would be very challenging. And, and maybe that speeds have changed and, you know, and things, have, things have been upgraded, but it's a slow wait for these big service providers to bring, um, well, there you go, he's got 100 down, 100 up at the house. So. Yeah, there you go. Just flash your numbers, Dallas. I appreciate that. Yeah, so that that's <laughs> that's great. That's the dream. That's the dream. And you know, and you know, one of the services that we do, and actually the the property we were at today, we provided a four G broadband service for this house, and the need for speed for this client was so much that we've actually bolted two four G connections together to give a combined speed of eighty meg download and a 45 meg upload, which is, is good, you know, but that, that's as good as we'll probably ever get it there based on its rural location. Right, absolutely. And so we're, we're, this is urban area where, where we're servicing and we do have some rural areas and those have to be serviced with a dish and it's okay. really expensive out in those urban areas. And, and I don't know, I haven't really looked into the, the 4G internet and see if we can get that type of down, uh, data. I think whenever we have this breakthrough of 5G and it starts being deployed across the, the nation, that'll completely change how network and internet is delivered into homes, and make it very affordable you know, for those rural areas to, uh, to be able to have access to content. Um, so is that y'all solution in the UK is the 4G chipsets that, that y'all can bring in? It is the, 
the easiest and quickest way to provide some fast internet to a household. Um, there isn't a, a long wait to get that connection. You just purchase that SIM card, find the appropriate router that accepts the SIM card, and you can have internet up and running the same day for a, for a customer rather than waiting maybe one, two, or three weeks for that traditional service provider. Um, we can use 4G as a backup, which might seem a little bit excessive for a home, but certainly for our commercial clients to have that 4G backup, if their, their sort of telephone line cable service goes down, it falls straight over onto 4G. And I think the smart home and, and the larger kind of homes with a lot of technology in them are on the verge of needing backups. Um, you know, if this fails, fall over to this. If this power supply drops off, go on to this battery. You know, I think on larger projects, I think it's sensible to have redundancy built in. Right. And I think, I think a lot of people are starting to be a lot more open to that and, and really understanding the need. It, it was a little bit hard pressed several years ago to, for them to understand that need. But again, as these devices are starting to be uh, embraced and brought into that home network, they're really understanding the need for bringing a professional in, somebody to be able to diagnose their their network correctly, somebody that can set up that infrastructure with some understanding and uh, some confidence uh, to, to do that for them. And, and our industry has gravitated in, into that. And I, just real quick, I want to say hey to my buddy, uh, Chris Cunningham and Dallas uh, Cosby. And of course, Alan's on there. And Alan's, he's, he's telling us he's got 200 down and 30 up. Yeah. And now that, you know, and he, I would uh -huh. probably guess that Alan is on, Probably that's probably some of the highest speeds you would get in the UK. Uh, he's probably with a provider called Virgin, who seem to be yeah. the kind of super fast broadband company for the UK. Um, and, and Alan does live, you know, in a fairly modern town. He's not that far outside of London, but you know, Alan might agree that the next village or town along from him might only get a fraction of the internet speeds. So there's always regional imbalance as well. You know, there's people that have got high speeds and then across town, you know, they're struggling with snail's pace broadband, you know? So it's, there's a little bit of imbalance with what service you get depending on where you are in, in, in your town or city. Um, and I don't think that's fair. You know, the, we're in 2018. <laughs> I think the service providers have had a long time to prepare the nation for super fast internet. And I think they're in their last, last chance saloon where they will quickly get uh, overrun now by the wireless providers, 4G, 5G, and, and maybe community wireless schemes as well. They were starting to see that appear in the UK where uh, private, smaller, more community-based networks are starting to be created and giving people 1,000 megabits download. Um, you know, there's a there's a there's a well-known scheme available now in the UK where you can get gigabit Ethernet to your home, uh, internet to your home. Right. And yeah, uh, Chris, my buddy Chris, and you've met Chris uh, over the phone. You'll meet him over at Cedia this year in San Diego. But Chris is saying that 5G wireless is going to be a game changer, and I, I happen to agree with him. Yeah. On that one, no doubt. But before 5G, and 5G might still be a two or three year rollout because of infrastructure and tower space and you know, bandwidth and devices that are actually receiving 5G. I know Arlo, those little battery powered cameras, I believe are being released currently with 5G technology, although it's not, you know, the infrastructure is not there. So I do know that manufacturers are building for it and they believe that it's going to be an improvement. No doubt. So what are you, uh, what are you currently, so that's, that's the network structure that, that y'all are working with. What type of, uh, is there security that, that you're putting in there with that network structure as well? Yeah, we've, it, we tend to. Is that a concern of y'all's in the UK as well? I mean, it's a big concern for us here. Do you mean in terms of, uh, 
firewalls? Do you mean in terms of an yeah? Uh, I think so. We do we do rely heavily on the service providers providing a certain level of protection. Um, we typically put in a, our own router into the installation as well. We're big fans of Ubiquiti. We use their uh, security gateway, uh -huh. um, which is a, easier for us to manage the traffic coming in and out of a homeowner's network. Um, and especially in a large, a large smart home project, you do need to be under control of what's coming in and out of, of the home. And, and some devices need to be given priority for, for traffic coming in and out. And you can only really do that with a, with a good quality router. Going beyond that, we're very big on creating uh, guest networks for, for on the Wi-Fi so that certain devices are given kind of like a segregated Wi-Fi connection, a very private, um, isolated connection, but they're still able to get online. And we're also using devices that are able to give the homeowner control of access to the internet. So maybe games consoles timed and scheduled to only certain hours of each day or children's laptops, tablets and smartphones being put on under parental controls like filters for content, but also scheduled and timed um, so that it's appropriate screen time or appropriate usage for for maybe younger people in the household as well so we're going right. that's very broad kind of you know discussion there but security is a big part of of what we offer to our clients and we're trying to give them all the features that they're requesting because the products are available nowadays right absolutely hey guys uh i appreciate y'all watching right now if y'all would down below just kind of send out a share for anybody else that you think might want to uh, uh, throw some comments up on our discussion right now we really appreciate it all the products that chris and i are talking about i know that chris has an absolutely incredible website and i'll let you, him tell you about that but the products that i'm talking about you can find at digitaldelight.com we also have a shop if you want to buy those products from our shop at digitaldelight.com forward slash shop uh, Chris, tell them a little bit about where they can find you, and then I'm going to hop into the Wi-Fi solution that, that we're providing our clients. Sure. No, I'd like to hear about that. Uh, yeah, my, my business is customized. We're based in the east of England, and we're a 100% smart home install business. We're a residential-focused technology installer. We are probably one of the most active companies in the UK and our industry on social media so the best way to find out about us is to look for us on Instagram look for us on Facebook Twitter just search for customize put it in your search engine you'll find our website have a look around it and um, engage with us if you've got any tech questions we're one of the most responsive uh, businesses out there for, for responding to your your tech questions yeah, and likewise for us as well, you know, we're, we try to be as engaging as you are online. You definitely have been at it a little longer than us, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch up to you, Gamble. So, you know, the, the solution that we're using the most for, for Wi-Fi deployment, we've used a variety of different ones, but the ones that, the one that we really go to, our go-to is the Eero solution, and you can spell that E-E-R-O. And they have a great website at Eero.com that, you know, discusses a variety of different solutions that they, they have to offer. They have two. Oh, really nice bed, man. I like <laughs> that. That's slick. Man, look at that. <laughs> I'm on the road. Yeah, you're always on the road, Gamble. I'm, I'm a traveler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but the Eero, it's, it's a true mesh Wi-Fi solution and it has like triple band built into it. So they're kind of looking ahead. So they have like the, um, the 2.4 gigahertz, the 5.2 gigahertz, but they also have this 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi because there's also devices that are being launched that have even a faster connection, connection rate that'll be broadcast through Wi-Fi and Eero is already set up for that. Um, I, I also like it because it fits into our 
mantra of small and compact and it doesn't have these crazy antennas you know making it look like some funky bug you know sitting on top of you know your entertainment center or on top of a cabinet and they're really flexible because we can also power them through poe so if you want to mount it in the ceiling we can run a cat 5 to it put the power source on the other end of that cat 5 and you don't need an electrical outlet right next to it it's a great solution we pre-wire for it in homes regularly and just just explain to me because we don't have this product in the uk eero is are all the devices routers or is, do you get one router and and then several access points how does it so does and, it, and that's a great question you can uh you can buy them in different types of packages and so you so there's one package right now that's one of our biggest sellers, which is the, the main hub, which is also the, the router router uh, that, that you put where the modem is at. And then you have these little beacons that you can plug into electrical outlets throughout your property. Um, and what's cool about the beacons is they have like a little night light on it. So it'll shine down and kind of illuminate your, your pathway if you'd like to do something like that. Okay. But whenever you're setting it up, it, it does a diagnostic to see if that is correct placement or should it be placed in a different location to get better performance. So it gives, it gives, you know, the installer some feedback, but it also, because it's a client facing app, when the client opens it up, they can clearly see if that particular device is functioning at the best performance or is there some type of an adjustment that needs, it, it gives them confirmation that yes, this is working. In the past, you know, clients have been very blinded by the network and by the Wi-Fi. Like, I, I think it's working. I'm not sure. But with the client-facing app, very similar to what y'all are working with, there's confidence, um, as well as a couple other features and, and benefits. And I'll, I'll talk more about that here in a second. What, what kind of price point then would, if, if you wanted to add the router uh, and, mm -hmm. and two two beacons, you know, that might cover a, a good sized property. What kind of investment would you be looking at having to spend? You know, and that, that's the cool thing about it. In the past, it used to be really expensive, but with their new um, uh, main hub and the two beacons, you can get into it for $399, okay? And you were asking about the, the routers, and so that, that's one package is, is the, the hub and two additional beacons. You can buy them with, with three hubs. And so if one hub happens to go down, then the other hub can take over as the router so your network stays reliable. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So it has a really cool pass through. And then, and so if, you, if, if we deploy a solution and in the future the client finds a dead spot or a spot that, that needs a little bit more coverage with a beacon, we're able to simply, or the client even, can simply purchase that beacon off of our website. When they receive it, they plug it in, open up the app and have, you know, add that particular beacon. And now that once dead space is now, now has Wi-Fi in it. Uh, or back in our backyards, a lot of people have, or wanting Wi-Fi in the backyard. So whenever they're having pool time or they're playing basketball or at the tennis court there in their backyard, you know, they, they, can have, they can be connected to their system that's inside their house, distributing audio or lighting and things like that and out can, on their property. A little, little bit of a technical question, but can a beacon connect to another beacon and then on to the, the hub? Is there any limitations so, to that mesh configuration? So whenever you're opening up the app, you can see the line of connectivity very much like you do with the Amplify. Yeah. And so the Amplify system, you can see your main, uh, main hub and then mm -hmm. your additional access points. And you can see how is that connectivity being made. Uh, with, the, with the Eero system, it's intelligent. And so it starts understanding your behaviors. It also starts understanding how much data is being drawn from which de devices and assigns behind the scenes priorities, you know, to those devices to give more reliability or focus speed into that into that particular device. So an example of that might be a games console 
or a media player, it gives that a little bit more bandwidth because it maybe detects that that's a kind of heavyweight user. Or a laptop versus an iPad. Okay. You know, it's like, oh, this device comes online, it uses data, about this much data, and so it has a less priority. Not that it restricts, yeah. it just it just starts understanding which devices are are more important in the network than others. I think at that price point you've described, three nine nine, you know, plus, you know, add a little bit for that professional installation, which will just give you that complete peace of mind that everything will have been done correctly and you'll be shown how to, to work everything right. Um, I think that kind of investment should be one of the first investments you make if you're wanting to, to grow the tech in your home uh, or if you've got aspirations to add you know, smart light bulbs, smart thermostats, smart doorbells and things like that. Start with the Wi-Fi. Get the Wi-Fi right and it will look after your smart home devices. It will give them the connection signal strength that they need. Um, a lot of people jump straight into smart home devices, but don't put the investment into the, into the Wi-Fi and the, and, the, and the wiring, if, if that's possible. Um, they don't invest in that. And one of my biggest frustrations is at a higher level, in construction industry, builders, property developers, do not invest in infrastructure, no wiring at the TVs for smart TV connections, no pre-wiring for security devices like cameras, doorbells, um, motion sensors, and you know, it, it's frustrating, but I would just highly recommend to anyone who's wanting to, to grow a smart home and create a smart home, start with the network, start with the Wi-Fi. Right. Absolutely. Hey, Dustin, I appreciate you uh, joining us from Lubbock, Texas. Uh, he's probably about six hours northwest of us. And one of our uh, viewers, Chris Cunningham, is asking, have I personally done an Eero versus a Ubiquiti Amplify side-by-side? -side? And I haven't done a true side-by-side, -side, but there, there are some things that I like about the Amplify that, that I wish Eero would adapt. The one thing for us is that the, the support that Amplify provides us as dealers and end users is zero. There, for us, there is absolutely zero tech support. Uh, it's all forum based. And so that really kind of has steered our boat in a different direction. One thing that I do like about Amplify that's different from Eero is that Amplify separates their bands. So they have a true 2.4 and a true 5.2 gigahertz band, whereas Eero combines them and you can't see a separation. And sometimes okay. when you're working with very, very cheap uh, wireless connected devices, they won't connect to an Eero. Uh, and so that's, that's one hurdle that, that we've seen and that's when we will use an alternative or a backup for uh, which would be Amplify, that give us a more reliable connectivity to those devices. So, you know, one thing that you said there, Chris, is that, you know, uh, frustration, you know, and, and clients, they, they, they kind of, they don't understand the necessity of having a stable network as well as a stable Wi-Fi in their home. And they go out and they buy a, a connected device or they try to connect a device they had to the network. And it seems like it's always cutting off or it's jittery or you get that spinning, you know, there on the screen. And in reality, you know, it's because the network's not set up correctly. It's not necessarily a device problem, but it's the network or the Wi-Fi and how it's deployed in the home that's causing those, those hurdles and those devices to work like they're designed to work. Yeah, it's it just kind of just again just takes it home for me that the home needs technology professionals. There's a lot of technology inside the four walls of your house, and it's got to the point where it needs some management. It needs an expert at times, not all the time, you know, but when it gets tricky. I really hope homeowners now start thinking, who's my nearest home technology professional? Who's my nearest geek that I can reach out to to get them to, to come and help me? Because I know that homeowners are having frustrations with technology, whether it's 
a music system that's not acting in the way that they wished it did, whether it's a doorbell that's, that's taking forever to connect to their smartphone or whether it's um, a lighting system that's just underperforming and maybe not consistently doing what it's been asked to do. It's probably because their network is letting them down and even just bringing a technology professional into your home for a, a free consultation, just let them put their eyes on what you've got to, to even make a suggestion. You'd be surprised at how quickly a home tech pro can, can turn around these problems and start to make things work a lot more smoothly again. Right. Absolutely. You know, in the products that we use, uh, we want to make sure that they're good quality products, that they are field tested and that we use a lot of products that are name brand recognized. And Eero is not necessarily name brand, but they're definitely making a, a statement for themselves. I was checking on Amazon today and they have a 4.6 star rating out of 1500 reviews. You know, and to have a 4.6 rating with that many reviews, you've got to be doing something right. Um, and so that just, you know, we're, we're seeing the results out in the field uh, from our clients, but it's always nice to check and see what other people from around the, the country are saying about, you know, the products that you're deploying. And, uh, and so I really have good faith in, in Eero. They, they have a couple of other things, Chris, you know, so this is the, the second generation that they come out with the beacon. They've improved it by 30% from what traditional access points are. And so 30%, you know, in range. And so they have a lot broader range and range is all about material, you know, glass or steel or cinder wall or uh, plaster walls. We are nothing, well, in other regions of the country, it's, it's, it's a little bit more like you guys. But here in Texas, we, we don't have people uh, where their networks are stomping out each other in, in the Texas area. I know up in, uh, over in your part of the country, you all have a lot of restrictions with build material on, on access points. Yeah, in a lot of new construction homes, there's a lot of uh, metal used, a lot of steel um, a lot of the insulation used in walls is often lined in foil, so it's a real Faraday cage for that for that wireless frequencies. Um, it can it can you know you can look at an average size house and you may have to put five or six wireless access points within that house, both indoor and outdoor, to get true whole home coverage, um, and that's a big investment if if you do have to go to that length, but it is the length you have to go to to get the coverage that all the devices need, especially if it's a home with 30, 40, maybe close to 50 devices connected to the internet. And people may think, oh, that sounds a lot, but just, just take telephones, smartphones and tablets. A household with four children, mum and dad, might have eight to 12 mobile devices, tablets, and smartphones. That's just, just on that, that product alone. Then factor in the television that connects to the internet, the, the multiple games consoles, you know. Kids are blessed with having one of every console. It seems like when I go into customers' homes, it's not just like in our day, we had a Nintendo and that was it. Everyone used the one <laughs> console. Now they have the Wii, the Switch, the Xbox, different versions of Xbox and then a PlayStation. PlayStation. Oh, yeah. They're, they're media streamers, Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV. They're all connected. They're not like they right. have just one. They have all three. Um, so you can see how quickly a house can, can grow to being a network of 20, 30, 40 devices. Um, and people moving around, Going indoor and outdoor, you need to have a system that allows you to, to, to move around the home that gives your device the strongest signal. Um, I, I always frustrates me that, that homes, you get good Wi-Fi inside, and as soon as you leave to go out into the garden or the driveway, you're back onto 3G or 4G. Well, I believe that you should be still connected to your home Wi-Fi when you're in the garden, the driveway, the garage, it's still part of the home. We try and cover from 
front gate to back fence and everything in between. Um, yeah. And if the construction methods are a challenge, you just have to overcome it with more wires and more devices, I'm afraid. Right. Hey, Ken, appreciate you hopping in. Please drop some comments down below. We're talking about Wi-Fi. You know that you were talking about all those devices that, that people are connecting to the network. And one of the cool things that we're able to do with, with our solution and also your solution as well is, is create profiles. And what those profiles allow us to do is manage access to, to the network. And so if you have to set some limits or mainly it's limits for parental control, uh, you can definitely do that with our solution. So, you know, if, if Bobby, for some reason, just can't get off of his PlayStation at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, like, like he's supposed to, then those types of profiles can be created and, and Bobby can be limited to, to access to the internet. Same thing with his, you know, any device that is wireless that does not have data capabilities, that is. There is a little caveat work around there. Yeah, you know, parents are, are worried about the amount of time their children are spending on mobile devices and games consoles, and, and quite rightly so. I'm a, I'm a parent, you too. And, and you don't want the, your kids to be glued to that five-inch screen for, for hours on end when they can be running around in the garden or playing with board games and jigsaws and doing old-school play activities as well so the ability to pause that device um, revoke access to that device set a schedule for for devices to only be connected at certain times i always say to our customers i'm giving you the power of the internet you're now the ruler the ruler of the internet and it right. it, it kind of like gets them pumped up that the kids can see oh no mum's back in charge again you know so I make a joke out of it, but it's, <laughs> I think that the parents should should have a level of control over uh, time that their, their kids can access the internet. Yeah, absolutely. And and when the kids are accessing the, the internet, we have options and plans that help prevent hacking. You know, we, we rely on our service providers, but also Eero has something built into it called Eero Plus that they can subscribe to for a very affordable yearly price. But it helps against like hackers and protective content and things of that nature. And clients really gravitate towards that because like you said, it gives them the power over the internet and they can really control and, and have some protections in place, you know, from, from unsavory sites you know, if they want to block that or content blocking or ratings and things of that nature, it really opens up that control for, for the homeowner. And, and they can, you know, that, that's, we talk about this pretty regularly, Chris, is about information and, and what we can do with the devices that we deploy. And, and Wi-Fi is, is the same, you know, with that information, we're able to make educated uh, decisions as well as we're able to put some control in place if necessary. Yeah, you know, it's, we're being bombarded with information, but it's information we need. It could be, we need to stay connected to our workplace. We need to be connected to our, our devices, our, our lighting, our heating, our, our security devices. Um, and if, if Eero provide this service, which I've not heard of this one before, and I think that's a great benefit of that system that it's okay. It's, there's a subscription model and, and some payment involved there, but to get that extra layer of, of safety and protection, remember you, that, that connection into your home, you have to keep that safe. That can be a place where nasty things can come into your home. In years gone by, you wouldn't dream of leaving windows and doors open. You know, we're in the habit of securing our, our home. Do you want to leave a, an open door through your internet connection? Right, right. And that, that's a fine example there. You know, Chris is, is talking about that you know, open door and it's not your, it, it's your home, but it's not your physical home, but there are ways that it can, the network can be penetrated by unsavory 
characters, you know, on the network and, you know, with the security package and a company backing it like Eero, you know, it gives you a peace of mind. Uh, I know that we set up a uh, security scanning solution at our, at our office. And I was just amazed at how many times people were trying to access my servers, uh, you know, from, from outside. It, it was unfortunately impressive, you know. What, what was it? There was a product we spoke about many months ago. Again, it's not available in the UK, but it was a, an additional box. Um, yes, the Kujo. Ah, that's it. Yeah. Is that something yeah. you still, still use? Or you, yeah, you we, still, we still work with Kujo, and exactly. It's a router, and it helps prevent malware, and they download uh, any time there's a threat that they have a that they have a fix for they deploy it instantly across their entire product platform it's a really good product okay yeah i, I do think there's there's going to be more products like that appearing for homeowners to choose from that will be you know a middle a middleman between provider and your network uh, that's just going to be that extra extra level of security, that extra comfort blanket that might, might let something, um, might not let something through that may have slipped through the service provider's net. So, you know, watch this space for, for more of that coming, hopefully in the UK, because we don't really have anything like that. There's a lot of trust in the service providers here. Um, but I do think it's imminent. I've heard whispers of, of similar products coming very soon from, from well-known brands in the UK. Well, you know, you and I were getting together here at the first week of September. You and I will be at the Cedia 2018 Expo there in San Diego, and Eero will definitely be there. I'll be more than uh, happy to, to introduce you to everybody that I know at the, at the Eero booth as well as, you know, we got a variety of different manufacturers that we do uh, have similarities with. I know Logitech's gonna be there with, uh, with a nice booth, uh, which is definitely different than their presence has been in the past. Uh, and then Sonos is gonna have an enormous booth this year, which I'm really excited about, and some product release information that they're gonna be making public at the expo uh, that we're gonna be able to, to provide uh, homeowners and, uh, Eero, Logitech, Sonos, Ring will be there. Yeah. Rachio. And I know y'all don't have Rachio, but uh, we, we just have Rain. We just have Rain. That's it. Yeah. Y'all just, just have Rain. <laughs> it, it rained. It rained for like twenty minutes here, <laughs> and then okay. it stopped. Now it's hot again, and more. Another humid. another stand that that we'll both be visiting is Lutron for lighting. Um, we'll oh both, man. We'll use that. Yeah, love those guys. And, you know, this year, I don't know if I told you or not, but this year I'm going to be uh, sitting with Blake Deal for, on the Lutron panel and discussing, you know, how Lutron has impacted our business and how we're, we're finding, you know, growth in our business by using that Lutron lighting control solution uh, with the Caseta or the Raw 2 Select. So it, I'm really excited about that. Uh, Dallas oh, just yeah. had the moment. Origin Acoustics. Uh, that's no, one that I'll guys. want to visit. Um, I'm yet to use their products, and I, I really yeah. want to get a closer look at those. Their speaker range. Do, do, you, have, do you have uh, Origins yeah. there in the UK? Origins there. It's oh. just it's they're fairly new to the UK, but, but not that new. It's just that they've not not been on my radar. Really depends on where you buy your equipment. You know, you have your loyalties to different different companies, and the people that use that stock Origin, we don't we don't use them for anything else. So, um, but all right. So, going back, going back on the Cedia Expo, just to explain to people that are listening and watching, and will be watching later, JJ and myself uh, will be producing a lot of content in the build up to the Cedia Expo. This is all part of it. This is part of our efforts to start ramping up our content production ahead of Cedia. And then when we hit the Cedia week of, of events, you're going to see a heck of a lot of content on all the platforms that, where we're present. We're, we're looking for people to come and join us on, on live videos, 
pre-recorded videos, audio, uh, sound bites on the show floor, after the show, at the parties, at the house where we're both going to be staying. I really want to encourage people to, to drop in and even join us for breakfast and have a bit of a tech talk with us. Um, so just just keep your eye on the airwaves for, for a lot of content coming out from, from JJ and myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this year, Cedia. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, shifting in our industry with uh, technologies as well as educational platforms in our Cedia community. And so I'm really, really excited to get over there and, and uh, network and meet people and discuss, you know, what we're doing different, you know, from the industry and, and what you're doing different from the industry and how we're seeing some, some cool impact with that, some great return with that. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a great week. Um, it's not far away, so we need to keep practicing. Yeah, it's right down the keep, keep it's right, yeah, it's right around the corner. Now, you know, since I since I got you on the horn here, uh, I think I think something that we'll want to follow up with in one of our next conversations is let's go ahead and talk about Lutron lighting control, and and also maybe discuss um, architectural speakers, and I'll talk about origin acoustics and the benefits that I find using them, as yeah. well as why? Why do we use these products that, that, that we sell to our end users? And, and uh, we're very much aligned with that, uh, the, with the why. And um, so that's exciting, man. I appreciate it. Hey, Dina, how are you? Hope you're enjoying Florida. Um, but yeah, want to, let, let's uh, dive a little deeper into Lutron and architectural speakers. And, you know, you're doing a lot of uh, garden speaker installs there in the UK. And um, so are we. We're doing a lot of outdoor speaker solutions as well. That's an extension of the family room, really. Yeah, it's very seasonal, that kind of work for us. Um, we've been lucky this summer that we've had the, the World Cup and it coincided with some really good hot weather in the UK. And England performed well during that competition yeah, which helped, yeah. and and people were spending more time outdoors, outdoor cooking. Um, you know, the kids are playing out more in the, in the summer, and just a little bit of marketing effort from us to highlight the benefits of some outdoor speakers, outdoor Wi-Fi, which coincides with that. Um, we, we don't do anything too complicated with our outdoor systems. We, we still use the Sonos system whether that's a Sonos amplifier, and then we just choose some the suitable speakers for that outdoor space. And surprisingly for our customers, they're delighted to hear that an installation like that can, can be done in less than a day with the cabling. You know, if we do a little bit of a pre-survey just to make sure, find our cable routes, it can be done in a day. It's an extension of your existing Sonos system that you might have indoors. And it will stop you having to drag that play three, drag that play one, and having, you know, having to find power outlet for it. You can have some nice quality uh, marine grade speakers mounted on the wall or landscape speakers spiked into the ground or around the garden and, and enjoy your, your favorite playlists, podcasts, and, and, uh, and, and relax in the garden and, and catch up on those. And even, you know, one of our clients, the feedback we've had so far, she's enjoyed this summer listening to her audio books outside, which is a lovely way to, to enjoy your audio books. I wonder what audio book she's listening to. So <laughs> yeah. romantic novels or, you know, <laughs> Stephen King or <laughs> maybe some Gary uh, Vaynerchuk or something like that maybe. out on the patio. <laughs> Maybe. all right brother well man it was fantastic catching up with you i really enjoy hopping on here with you and uh for people that don't know who i am i'm jj cannon with digital delight you can find us online at digitaldelight.com you can also find us on youtube or on instagram at digital delight one or on facebook at digital delight tx um or, or hit us uh, hit us up in the dm how about you, Chris? Yeah, I would encourage anyone 
who wants to listen to more of these conversations because we're going to alternate between it going live on Customize page and Digital Delights page. So make sure you follow Customized. It's at Customized LTD or just search for Customized in your Facebook search bar. Um, follow us, like us, and please, 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 if you have watched this one, share this video, um, hit, you know, smash that like button as my seven-year-old son says. Um, we'd really appreciate that. Um, and let's see how far these conversations can reach. All right, brother. You get to bed and I will talk to you tomorrow. You have a good one, man. Cheers. Good night. All right. Cheers. Bye.